One of humanity's most inspiring achievements was when we first flew into space. But the entire space program would not have been possible without the existence of the rocket engine. With interest in space travel growing every year, more and more companies are striving to develop their own technological solutions to turn this dream into a reality. In today's video, we are going to take a look at several different intriguing technological solutions that will have a person heading into the stars over and over in the future. Let's begin with what is perhaps the most controversial rocket engine of the past 30 years, the M-Drive. This concept of a rocket engine, first proposed by British engineer Roger Shoya in 1999, comprised a magnetron and a resonator. The man described it as a fuel-free rocket engine. The magnetron installed generates microwaves. The vibration energy of these waves accumulates in a high-quality resonator. Then, a standing wave of electromagnetic oscillations in a specially shaped closed resonator becomes the source of the thrust. Because neither matter, nor electromagnetic radiation is emitted outside the resonator, the M-Drive does not fall under the list of photon engines. And even if the microwaves generated by the magnetron were to be emitted fully in one direction, the resulting thrust would still be several times less than the declared thrust of the M-Drive. From a theoretical physics point of view, the very concept of motion without a reactive surge from the object's mass contradicts Newton's law of conservation of momentum. According to the latter, while inside a closed system, the linear and angular points remain constant, regardless of any changes occurring within the system. In other words, if one does not apply a certain amount of external force to the body of the object, it is impossible to move it. And any positive results of experiments with M-Drive are merely a measurement error. The scientific community, and everyone else for that matter, did not exactly wait for any explanation from the teams developing the M-Drive regarding such a contradiction. Shoya himself published his work without any review explaining the engine's operation. Nevertheless, scientists challenged all of his arguments made in favor of the concept's viability, and pointed out that the theory of radiation pressure is much more complicated than the simplified apparatus Shoya was using in his studies. The very fact that a British engineer's engine was working, along with various theoretical explanations for this, stood at odds against the very concepts previously established in the world of physics namely those regarding the nature of a vacuum, inertia, and electromagnetic waves. First, there was allegedly a working prototype consisting of a truncated cone with a cutoff top, capable of developing a force of 0.02 newtons. This was later shown by Shoya in 2002 under the auspices of his personal company, Satellite Propulsion Research and by 2006, its capacity had reached 0.1 newton. Then, in 2013, the engine caught NASA's attention. This was bound to happen sooner or later because, assuming the device works as its designer had claimed, this was looking to be revolutionary for the field of astronomy. Harold White, the head of NASA's Advanced Engine Applied Physics Laboratory, decided to test the device at Johnson Space Center's Eagle Works Laboratory. During this, the team experienced an abnormal result, thrust of 0.0001 newtons. Afterwards, White concluded that such a resonator could work if one were to create a virtual plasma toroid, where thrust would occur via magnetohydrodynamics amidst quantum vacuum oscillations. Obtaining a result of 0.0001 newtons was, in principle, possible thanks to the tests done on a torsion pendulum used for smaller forces. These are capable of detecting even the smallest of forces, say for example, micronewtons. Testing was also done in a stainless steel vacuum chamber held at room temperature and normal atmospheric pressure. After the Eagle Works group published the data, however, the media displayed the M-Drive as a NASA-tested engine. This was in spite of the fact that the agency itself claimed it was only an experiment and had not yet led to any practical results. 
but the media had no intentions of slowing down. According to White's data, the M drive produced 1.2 mH per 1 kW. By comparison, a hypothetical photon engine is capable of delivering only 3.3 Nm per watt, powered only by a conventional pulse from light emitted into space. While the M drive, which emits nothing at all, turned out to actually be around 500 times more efficient. In 2016, a subsidiary of the Chinese Academy of Space Technology, CAST, reported that they had managed to create working prototypes of Shoya's rocket engines. These were sent out into outer space for testing aboard the space laboratory Tiangong-2. Around this time, some information had surfaced stating that the PRC authorities had been sponsoring tests since 2010. In September 2017, new reports were released from China talking about a new functioning M-Drive engine. Unfortunately, though, there has yet to be any proof of a Chinese prototype actually completing a successful launch. While China carried out their project, specialists from the Dresden University of Technology got to work as part of the Space Drive project, led by Martin Tymar. He said that the only way to test Shoya's idea is through experimentation. The scientists group has thoroughly tested an exact copy of M-Drive over several years, after which they presented their results via three reports at the Space Propulsion Conference 2020 and 2021. German scientists recreated the experimental setup with which they worked out while at NASA. As it turns out, the imaginary thrust was the result of a thermal effect influencing the scale of the thrust measuring device. During the operation and heating of the engine, the fasteners became deformed, which resulted in the scale going astray. This problem was eliminated by improving the suspension design. The new changes did nothing to confirm the engine's claimed performance. One might think this was the final blow for the M-Drive. But soon, Shoya himself repeated his claims that the device was suitable for interstellar travel and the launching of objects into orbit. One should also not so quickly discount the $1.3 million that were allocated by the DARPA agency to the University of Plymouth in order to study and create a fuel-free engine based specifically on quantum inertia. The idea contradicts special and general relativity and most closely resembles the idea behind M-Drive. But from something semi-mythical, we now dive deeper into science fiction itself. The idea of an ion rocket engine was, after all, born from this very genre. Donald W. Horner first mentioned it in his novel Airplane to the Sun, the adventures of an aviator and his friends. This, of course, was not limited to just books, but also showed up in video games and the movie screens as well. In Star Wars, for example, an economical ion engine was developed boasting a speed of up to a third of the speed of light, and was used to travel short distances, at least by cosmic standards, within the planetary system. Astronauts did not test this novelty until the second half of the 20th century, and the real-life engines were, in terms of technical characteristics, much inferior to their pop culture prototypes, especially in regards to thrust. The president of the Lebanese Academy of Sciences, Edgar Shawiri, once jokingly referenced to the ion engine as a car that takes two days to accelerate from zero to 62 miles per hour. Just like a rocket engine, an ionic engine belongs to the jet engine category. Instead of burning fuel though, it utilizes gas ionization. The rest of the work is based off of the same principle as that of jet propulsion, Newton's third law. In other words, the apparatus moves forward due to the flow of ions ejected from the engine. An inert gas, most often either argon or xenon, is fed into the combustion chamber, and this gas is ionized with the help of a stream of electrons. Then, the electrons are captured by special mechanisms, and the positively charged ions move to the lattices. These possess a very significant potential difference, which accelerates and ejects the ions from the nozzle, thus creating a jet thrust. The previously captured negatively charged electrons are thrown at an angle towards the flow of ions in order to neutralize their charge. 
Otherwise, some of the ions would be attracted to the actual engine body, thereby reducing its overall thrust. The main disadvantage of such engines tends to be that their use is confined exclusively to space, where there is no air resistance and only smaller devices, such as satellites. Then there's the orientation of larger objects. Many of these, however, don't even have rocket propulsion systems. For example, Elon Musk's SpaceX uses ion thrusters on its Starlink internet satellites to improve the device's maneuverability and prevent them from colliding into space debris. For the first time in history in 1917, Robert Goddard, the creator of the first liquid propellant rocket engine, proposed the concept of an ion engine to the scientific community. A detailed description of the technology and all the necessary calculations were not presented, however, until some 37 years later, in 1954 by Ernst Stuhlinger. The first functioning ionic electrostatic engine was created in 1959 in the United States, and five years later in 1964, its first demonstration took place during the suborbital flight of NASA's CERT-1 spacecraft. It operated successfully during the planned 31 minutes of flight. In 1970, another test was held to demonstrate the long-term performance of mercury ionic electrostatic motors in space. Enter CERT-2. A couple of factors that had discouraged American designers from using electric and ion engines for a long time was the low thrust and low efficiency. Parallel to the CERT-1 in 1964, the Soviet Union developed the Probe-2, a plasma erosion engine created by A. M. Adrianov. This device was launched into space, working as a maneuver engine powered by solar batteries. Soviet scientists did not exactly want to simply give up on the development of ion engines, and so they continued to improve their designs and conducted more and more experiments. This is how the SPT-25 came to be, with a thrust of 25 mn. The SPT-100 and other such devices were installed on the satellites of the USSR beginning in 1984. It was also used on the Deep Space One in 1998 as a cruise ion engine. Among other subsequent examples, it showed up in the European Lunar Probe Smart One, which was launched in 2003. The Japanese spacecraft Hayabusa, which was sent to the asteroid Itakawa the same year, having returned to Earth in 2010. And also in the automatic interplanetary station Dawn from NASA, which was launched in 2007. The latter carrying three NSTAR engines previously used on Deep Space One, was designed to study Vesta and Cirrus. The Dawn's mission came to a close in 2018 following 11 years of flight, after the device ran out of fuel for maneuvering and orientation. The European Space Agency installed an ion engine on the GOCE satellite launching it in 2009 at an ultra-low Earth orbit of about 161.5 miles high, thus compensating for the atmospheric friction and other non-gravitational influences. Among the active missions that involved an ion engine, or several, actually, we have Starlink, Artemis, Hayabusa 2, Bepi Colombo, and the most recent base module of the Chinese space station, Tianhe, launched in 2021 with four ion engines for orbit correction. NASA had even planned to install the next generation ISS Vasimir ion engine on the ISS. This idea was abandoned in 2015 though, due to the ISS is not being an ideal demonstration site for such engines. Another reason for the cancellation of Vasmir testing was the fact that scientists could not find an energy source which would suit this engine. The most promising prospect was a thermonuclear installation, but its use on the ISS could be risky. Today, NASA is gradually shifting away from the idea of fuel-free rocket engines, and instead embarking on an active journey to develop a reactor for nuclear thermal propulsion. Simply put, they wish to create and perfect a nuclear space engine. Nuclear thermal power plants are one of the alternatives to chemical rocket engines under construction.
They generate thrust via exhaust gases, which are emitted in the opposite direction of travel. The key difference between these two is how the exhaust gases are produced. In a nuclear thermal engine, a small and unique fission reactor is utilized to heat the fuel and create thrust. In theory, such an installation would be considerably more efficient than chemical rocket engines and could be used for both manned and cargo missions to Mars, as well as other scientific missions outside the solar system. Thermal rocket engines are looking to be the happy medium between chemical and electric rocket engines. They are not inferior in traction to chemical ones and possess a higher flow rate for the working fluid, although they are technically inferior in this capacity to their electrical counterparts. Still, they will be able to send much larger ships on interplanetary flights while using minimal fuel reserves. The development of nuclear technology for space travel may take at least several years, however. Previously, no country in the world had successfully brought the design of such engines to a level where their use could be considered safe. The USSR cut the development of RD-0410 short in 1988, right after the Chernobyl tragedy. And in the US, a similar project was shut down in 1965, when all attention and efforts were being focused on the lunar program. Nowadays, Russia is developing its own nuclear-powered Zeus orbital complex, also called the Nuclear Tow. This was first presented in 2020, while the prototype is scheduled to be shown by 2025. And in 2030, the first flight of Zeus will be conducted. The country's authorities have already allocated more than $57 million to make this happen. As for China, the country intends to release its nuclear rocket engine from the factory by 2040. The US announced plans in 2019 to develop a new ROAR, Reactor on a Rocket, nuclear rocket engine. Just a year later, the program received additional funding, and the program itself was renamed DRACO, Demonstration Rocket for Agile Cislunar Operations. DRACO's goal is to successfully demonstrate the performance of a thermal nuclear rocket engine on a spacecraft by 2025. The US Department of Defense is also showing interest in nuclear rocket engines, hoping to expand its activities beyond the limits of only near-Earth orbit. In the spring of 2021, DARPA announced that the DRACO project had progressed forward to its technical design stage which is set to last another 18 months. During this time, the San Diego-based General Atomics Electromagnetic Systems, in collaboration with X-Energy LLC and Aerojet Rocketdyne, will develop a nuclear reactor for the engine. Meanwhile, Blue Origin Corp and Lockheed Martin partnered with Seattle-based Ultra-Safe Nuclear Technologies, Lynchburg-based Framatone, Matreon, and BWX Technologies to voluntarily create competing projects for the purpose of creating and demonstrating spacecraft that will use the new engines. According to reference, the engine reactor will operate on low enriched uranium fuel, containing a U-235 isotope content ranging from 5% to approximately 20%. For comparison, the fuel for the light water reactors of nuclear power plants contains a U-235 isotope ranging from only 3% to about 5%. And in the power plants used by the US Navy, this figure reaches up to 90%. The program participants were selected by NASA alongside the US Department of Energy. And contracts worth $5 million each were signed with the teams to develop the concepts. Of all of the engines we've covered today, which one do you think will end up becoming the basis for interplanetary travel? Let us know in the comments below! And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.